Hello. Now, there was some exciting news this week from the Bank of England about their £20 note. They want to change the face on the front of it. Not the, the Queen, she remains. But on, on this side, where currently the 18th century economist Adam Smith resides. They want a new figure for that for a few years' time, and they want us to help make some suggestions. Uh, criteria are fairly straightforward. They have to be British, dead, and a visual artist, a painter, sculptor, filmmaker, designer, that sort of thing. Now, already thousands of people have contributed to this discussion, and I thought I'd throw in my two pennyworth, and I've made a bit of a list. Now, the front runners are people like William Hogarth, the cartoonist and artist. Uh, Turner and Constable, obviously, in there. Barbara Hetworth, I am delighted to say, is being taken very seriously. For my money, she is one of the most important artists of the 20th century. Lowry is in there, not my favourite, but fair enough, people like him. Uh, Beryl Cook, the cartoonist illustrator um, who made the sort of so saucy postcard type uh, images. She's, uh, she's likely to fare well. Vanessa Bell from the Bloomsbury Group, interesting. Alfred Hitchcock, of course, and of course, Isabel Kingdom Brunel, the engineer who, whose work you can see all, all through the country, he's clearly going to have a good run. But for me, it comes down to two people. One is William Morris, the designer and painter engraver. He changed the way the visual arts not only were in this country but were in the world. When the Germans wanted to come over and find out why Britain was doing so well at the end of the 19th century, they pinpointed Morris and his arts and crafts movement. The fact that he was able to put a view on industrialization which had a more human-centric appearance, that it softened things down. It had something to do with nature, as Ruskin would say. And they went back and they set up these things called the Deutsche Werkbund and took on uh, design and took it very seriously indeed. But Morris was a father of this. He had this sensitivity. He had this relationship with nature that he was able to transmit through the works he produced. He was, in my view, a genius. And the other person I'd like to see shortlisted for the banknote, in fact, on the banknote, is the 19th century photographer Julia Margaret Cameron. Now, you might not know her work. She's not particularly famous, but she's really important and absolutely brilliant, and also quintessentially eccentric in a British sort of way. She didn't start taking pictures until she was 48 years old. She was a mother of six, and her daughter gave her a camera, a newfangled piece of kit. And Julia Margaret Cameron really took to it and started photographing all her mates, among whom were people like Alfred Lord Tennyson. And she created this extraordinary catalogue of portraits of some of the most important people from that period in Britain. She developed a very singular style remarkably quickly. Now, of course, all her pictures were black and white, given the time, but she really accentuated that aspect of them. The backgrounds were very, very dark indeed. And then she used a single light source to capture the feature of her sitter. That tended to be the head. She was absolutely obsessed with heads and the shape of people's heads and what it said about them. The result is, is kind of fabulous. It's a suite of portraits created over quite a short period of time, about 11 years, that are both monumental and sculptural, but also incredibly intimate. I think she is one of the greatest artists of Britain has ever produced, and also a great innovator. Now, you can vote for her or you can vote for whoever you like. There are other people on the list. Look, here we are. Other suggestions I've got. What about Giles Gilbert Scott? He of the red telephone boxes and Tate Modern. Alexander McQueen, the fashion designer whose show is currently on at the V&A. James Sterling, the architect. And, of course, Bernard Leach, the potter. All great people, which I suppose is the point. Isn't it fantastic that we can sit here and think about streams and streams and streams of individuals who've made such a remarkable contribution to our country and our culture, all of whom have come from the visual arts.